everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be exploring an example of computing the primary consolidation settlement of a clay layer. So let's look at the given information. Given to us, we're being asked to compute the primary consolidation settlement for the NC clay. And we need to remember that NC means normally consolidated. And we're also being told that the applied load at the ground surface is over a large area. So what this phrasing means is that when we eventually calculate the applied load in the clay layer, we do not need to account for stress dissipation. That means we do not need to use Boussinesq's method or two to one method since the applied load is over a large area at the ground surface. So here we have our soil strata. The ground surface here is subject to this large surface load of Q equals 500 PSF. And then beneath the surface, the first thing we encounter is a five foot thick sand layer with a specific gravity of 2.6 and a void ratio of 0.65. Beneath that, we then encounter a clay layer that is fully saturated. You can tell by the level of the, the water table here is at the sand clay interface. That clay layer is six feet thick and it has a C sub C value, which is the compression index of 0.15. It has a swell index of 0.08. It has a specific gravity of 2.75 and a void ratio of 0.91. So maybe pause the video, write this down, sketch this in your notebooks because we're about to get into the solution. So when we write solution, the first thing we can do is go ahead and calculate our soil unit weights, our soil properties. We're gonna need those in order to calculate the overburden pressure. So I'm gonna say first compute gamma values to be used to calculate overburden stress sigma prime naught, okay? So let's go ahead and first calculate the dry unit weight of the sand. We're gonna calculate the dry unit weight of this sand because the water table is below that. The, the sand is considered dry since the water table is not within the sand. And we remember from um, one of our phase relationships, we can calculate dry unit weight as specific gravity times the unit weight of water divided by one plus the void ratio. And so for that sand, that's going to be 2.6 times 62.4 PCF divided by um, 1 plus E naught, which is, or 1 plus E, which is 1.65. So when you crunch this through, you should get 98 point three PCF that's pounds per cubic foot next we can calculate the saturated unit weight of the clay again notice the water table here uh, at the clay sand interface which indicates that the clay is fully saturated so we're going to say gamma sat sub c for clay and that formula from our phase relation knowledge is g sub s plus e times the unit weight of water divided by one plus e for the clay layer. So we're gonna write that as 2.75 plus 0 0.91 times 62.4 PCF, all divided by 1.91. And so evaluating this, we get 119.6 PCF as the saturated unit weight of the clay. Next, we're gonna compute the overburden pressure. Now, you need to remember, when you're calculating the overburden pressure, we compute the overburden pressure at the midpoint of the layer that we are performing the consolidation test on or the consolidation analysis on, okay? So we're gonna make a note here. We're gonna say compute sigma prime naught at midpoint of the clay layer. All right. So when we do that, we're going to say sigma prime naught equals the dry unit weight of the sand times the height of that strata, which is five feet, plus the effective unit weight of the clay, which is gamma sat clay minus gamma water. 
times the depth where we want to calculate sigma prime naught. So what depth is that? Is it six feet? No. Is it five feet? No. It is three feet. Okay. So again, we have, you always can ask yourself, what do we have above this point of interest? We have five feet of dry sand, and then we have three feet of the saturated clay okay and so again we're gonna punch this through and you can substitute those unit weight values in there punch this through yourself to make sure you get the same answer as me i get 663.1 psf and at this step it's just an effective stress calculation we actually have not done any consolidation calcs yet okay now we're about to do the consolidation calculation. So the problem statement said this is a normally consolidated clay layer, okay, an NC clay. So if you recall from your consolidation uh, knowledge, we are not going to utilize C sub S. We do not need C sub S at all. I mean, we have it, but we don't need it. What we really need is C sub C. So we need that compression index. And so our uh, derived formula for primary consolidation for NC clays is going to be S sub P equals C sub C times H divided by 1 plus E naught times the logarithm, and that's actually log base 10, of sigma prime naught plus sigma Z divided by sigma prime naught okay so going through all of these terms what do we know what do we already have well c sub c is given to us in the problem statement e naught is given to us we're going to take e naught as the e value for the clay which was that 0.91 value because we don't have any other void ratio for the clay so it must be 0.91 we know the thickness of the clay layer h is the full six feet okay so even though even though we calculated the effective stress at the midpoint but remember the entire six feet of clay is consolidating it's that entire six feet that wants to settle downwards, okay? And so if we wanted to just conveniently work in terms of inches, we can write that as 72 inches, all right? Um, we just calculated sigma prime naught. What about sigma z? Well, sigma z is the applied, applied stress at clay midpoint and we're gonna say sigma z is that Q value, which was 500 PSF at the ground surface. And why are we saying that? Well, we said that that Q value is applied over a large surface, which means stress dissipation is not going to be computed, right? So this was uh, to account for no stress dissipation, okay? So when we substitute all these values in, we're going to end up writing S sub P equals C sub C. What was that? Uh, 0.15 times the thickness, which was 72 inches, divided by 1.91 log, and that's a log base 10, of 663.1 PSF plus 500 PSF, all divided by 663.1 PSF. And you can notice that um, the units of PSF inside the logarithm, they definitely cancel, right? Because you everything has PSF in the numerator and the denominator. So all those cancel. So I'm going to go to my... Um, my TI 36X Pro calculator, and we can punch this in together. Again, you want to be very careful. It's L-O-G. It's log. It is not um, L-N, okay? It is L-O-G. So I'm punching this in my calculator as, as I speak. Take the log times 0.15 times 72. And let me try that one more time. I think I made a, a typo error. So 663.1 plus 500 divided by 663.1. Sometimes you just got to punch it in a couple times to make sure you're getting the right answer. 
hopefully you're punching in with me and I get 1.38 inches as my consolidation settlement uh, for the NC clay layer. And what that means is this six foot layer will compress or settle down about 1.3 inches due to this applied load at the ground surface. And remember the definition of primary consolidation is the settlement of a cohesive soil layer, in this case clay, due to the dissipation of pore pressure. So when this applied load is acting at the ground surface, it's gonna compress this clay layer and it's gonna squeeze out the water in the void space here. And that's gonna cause a volume change in the clay layer, which is reflected as a vertical settlement because again, we're we're performing one dimensional consolidation uh, calculations here. So that's gonna conclude this video. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe and be on the lookout for more content like this. Thanks for watching.